My, my. What have people gotten themselves into? You know, it's been some time since I've had a good discussion about CERN. Every time I look further into what CERN is doing, I can't help but to feel like those theories people have put out there about portals, giants, rituals, magic. I'm starting to feel that this is really the case. Now that is not to say that what they are trying to do is working, but what are they doing? I mean, really, why are they doing this? CERN's mission statement. At CERN, our work helps to uncover what the universe is made of and how it works. We do this by providing a unique range of particle accelerator facilities to researchers to advance the boundaries of human knowledge. The laboratory, established in 1954, has become a prime example of international collaboration. Our mission is to provide a unique range of particle accelerator facilities that enable research at the forefront of human knowledge, perform world-class research in fundamental physics, unite people from all over the world to push the frontiers of science and technology for the benefit of all. I think it is valuable to understand that many of these experiments and such are old occult ideas or rooted in them. It seems like everyone is awake to what is going on at CERN, everyone except the people who work there, not to mention the interns and the students. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's build a great big tunnel. It's going to cost a bunch of money we don't have, but I think it will be worth it. Well, what's the idea? We'll build this great 100 kilometer tunnel underground. We'll line it with magnets and smash light particles together at nearly the speed of light. Oh, that sounds like an interesting idea. Why would you want to build that? Oh, I just want to see something. Can you imagine that conversation? So they want us all to believe that they have an endless supply of geniuses over there. That they can build machines that don't even make sense how they work. You will probably never see more complex equipment than what you see at CERN. But what is this technology rooted in? Makes you wonder what they had going on at the Tower of Babel. Or maybe what people say is going on at CERN is just a bunch of babble. Let's go slow here. What does the Tower of Babel have anything to do with CERN? Why would someone make that connection in the first place? First, we need to find out everything we can about this tower. Maybe not all in this presentation, but the information that may be valuable here. Here's the scripture in Genesis 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, 
and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Understand that this is one of the most well-known stories of the Bible that has grown beyond what is actually written. These verses are cleverly constructed to give more meaning to the wordplay. For one thing, in Genesis 10, it's kind of been established already that there were other languages. In 10.5 it says, By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Second, the phrase, go to, let us, is used three times, twice by humans and once by God. The statement here may be that God's word is exact and decisive, and overpowers mankind's repetitive attempts and efforts to get things done. Ultimately, being scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth is what these people feared most and is the point of the story. This is what God told Adam and Eve to do. It is what he told Noah and his family to do. And this was a blatant attempt to defy God, right along with building a tower with its top in the heavens. I want to tell you guys something, and Many of you may disagree with me, but I'm telling you, trying to stay within your own bloodline and race is an act against what God has intended for us right from the beginning. This is one of the reasons he has wiped out civilizations, because people want to keep multiplying, but don't want to move out of their homeland, which leads to tribalism and incest by simple probability. You guys understand this is one of the reasons why globalists elites want to stay within their bloodlines because it is in defiance and in rebellion against God and his plan. They are on the side of the devil, you see. Now, when it comes to this city and tower, note that the Lord had to come down to see it. This could be an indication that the height of the tower is not the issue. In fact, it gives no real reason why God disapproved of this tower, which tells us that there was a threatening issue with the tower that was not detailed in scripture, which is interesting because important details are left out of some of the most important biblical stories, like that of the giants. You know how some people say information has been removed from the scriptures upon being printed on a mass scale could that include information on the Tower of Babel? Some people have theorized that the tower was an ancient ziggurat. Well, we'll take it a step further. Some people believe the tower to be some type of alien airport or even a portal of some type, a stargate, which brings us back around to CERN. You know what kills me? They want to call people conspiracy theorists. And they want to tell us that we are all wrong about them and their intentions. And then you see CERN print stuff like this in 1970, undermining the Tower of Babel. Do you see the deception here, folks? They are the ones who propagate and put these theories out there. You ever wonder where these theories about the government and shadow government come from? them hiding aliens and UFOs, it comes from them. They start up these theories. <laughs> Undermining the Tower of Babel, a language laboratory has been in use at CERN for just over a month. It is designed to cater for those who wish to learn English or French or Russian rapidly, and it makes full use of the very latest audiovisual methods. This process of de babelization is all the more welcome at CERN, since the courses are almost completely self-financed. So, let's just be real about what is going on with and at CERN. If you have watched my other videos on CERN, you may get the idea that there is so much going on all over the place. This is really complex stuff and there are many compartments. Think of it like a campus of facilities and operations. But most people on this campus always go to the same two or three buildings. So most people only a, so most people only know about the LHC, the magnets, 
maybe the cloud experiments, and maybe people have some knowledge on their detectors. But CERN has so many things going on there and at other locations, most people only care about the agenda. Portals, the Mandela effect, the abyss, demons, occult rituals. And CERN, they are the ones who get these theories out there. It wasn't any one of us who was out there in black robes in the front of the statue of Shiva. By the way, we didn't put the statue of Shiva, the destroyer, in the front lawn. Who said anything about black holes, dimensions, antimatter, dark matter? That's all them. They put that out there. How many of you have heard of CERN's Mad Max experiment? Now you're probably thinking, what? Yes, Mad Max experiment. It's the magnetized disk and mirror axion experiment. They couldn't even use the actual acronyms. They had to be funny and call it Mad Max. You see what I'm talking about? CERN's commercial they released years ago is a creepy video with a creepy dance in it. Mad Max. So this is an experiment to confirm the existence of axions or dark matter. And they plan to use this experiment to convert axions into photons. And that's where I had to say, wait a minute. See, they always do this. We're not sure this particle exists, so we're going to use all these resources to build experiments to prove they exist, even though we already know that they do. What they are saying is, if they can convert these axions into photons, then there you go, axions exist. Instead of saying they are pulling light particles out of nowhere, they're going to use one of their aged magnets, the Merpurgo magnet. And it's just the prototype. Wait till they have a full scale experiment up and running. And I'm thinking, why does it have to be larger? They really want to create light out of nothing. Where is this going? But you know, they say they're planning to have Mad Max up and running at Desi by after 2025, which is the German version of CERN. So, at least we know that the world will still exist after 2025, according to them, or some form of it anyway, maybe the Mad Max version of it. Some things are being detected, folks, more so now than ever before, due to Earth changes and some things going on in the cosmos. CERN has many functions, and alarms have been going off. Their detectors are detecting particles that they are intended to detect. They are not detecting particles that they just made up and wanted to see if they're there or not. Do you see? You build a neutrino detector, put it deep in the earth to detect a particle that rarely interacts with anything. And right now they are detecting them more than they ever should have. Folks, we've been having these burst waves and particles hitting us for the past few years now, all because of things exploding out in deep space like magnetars. CERN has many functions. There is more to come, everyone. Stay tuned. I had to make some readjustments last week, but we should be back on track this week, business as usual. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. Everyone have a happy day. This is Jay Woodward reminding you all to stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.